Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 3 of the year 2021, approving the amendments to the GCC trademark law after its adoption by the Shura and Representatives Councils. According to the amended version adopted by the 40th Summit of the GCC Supreme Council held in Saudi Arabia on December 10, 2019, the phrase competent authority shall be defined as the ministry in the member state with jurisdiction over the implementation of the GCC trademark law. The term minister shall be defined as the, the minister in charge of implementing the provisions of this law. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa a Safriya Palace. His Majesty the King was presented with a book entitled Rafa'a glory between the past and the present, which was compiled by the Southern Governorate. It highlights the city's long, rich history and development stages. His Majesty expressed thanks to the Governor for the book containing valuable information that reflects Rafa's distinguished and cultural status, as well as its contributions to the comprehensive National Development March and heritage sites that stand witness to Bahrain's deep-rooted rich history. His Majesty the King also commended the Southern Governorate's good efforts and initiatives aimed at fostering national belongings cementing the values of citizenship and loyalty in addition to its constant communication with the local citizens and keenness to deliver the best services to them. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain will carry on the nation-building process across various governance in order to meet the needs and aspirations of all the citizens. The Southern Governor extended his deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty for his constant support for the Southern Governorate, which is witnessing numerous developments and housing projects thanks to the Royal Directive. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Zafriya Palace the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Sheikh Dr. Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Assistant Foreign Affairs Minister Abdullah bin Faisal al Dusiri, and a number of the center's members on the occasion of the inauguration of the Declaration of Bahrain in South America, starting from Brazil, which was attended by the Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro and was held in December of last year, coinciding with the anniversary of His Majesty's accession to the throne and the National Day. His Majesty the King was updated on the success of the function which reflected the Kingdom's vision in promoting peaceful coexistence and dialogue between cultures and religions. The event also highlighted Bahrain's pioneering role and civilizational and humanitarian position throughout its history. His Majesty the King affirmed that the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence is the best ambassador for the Kingdom, noting that peaceful coexistence, tolerance and peace have become more influential in boosting this field. He expressed his thanks and appreciation to the President of Brazil for his support to Bahrain's trends and initiatives which reflects deep-rooted relations between the two friendly countries and people and their perpetual growth in all areas. His Majesty the King praised the continuous efforts of the Chairman and members of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence in promoting the Center's noble message and achieving its humanitarian goals of fostering peace and tolerance and underlining freedom of thought and belief. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain will remain an all-inclusive country of pluralism, as well as cultural, religious and humanitarian coexistence. He stressed that the Kingdom will maintain its approach of moderation and openness on the world while holding to its inherent national fundamentals. Dr. Khalid bin Khalifa extended his sincere congratulations to His Majesty the King on the graduation of the first batch of the King Hamad Faith and Leadership Program, a specialized training session for peaceful coexistence that was held in cooperation with the University. University of Oxford. He also expressed his thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for praising the role of the center and the efforts of its personnel. He commended His Majesty's wisdom and forward-looking vision to support all endeavors aimed at boosting human welfare. He lauded the pioneering and civilizational royal initiatives to foster tolerance and peaceful coexistence. The Secretary General of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence submitted a report on the center's present and future plans and programs. 
The BDF Commander-in-Chief received the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa at the BDF General Command in the presence of the Minister of Defense Affairs Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Ziyad bin Sagr Al Naimi, and the Under Secretary of Defense Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. During the meeting, the BDF Commander-in-Chief presented His Highness Sheikh Nasser with the Medal of Military Merit of the First Class, which was conferred on him by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The BDF BDF Commander-in-Chief welcomed the National Security Advisor commending his efforts in achieving further development in combat and administrative progress for the BDF Royal Guard. The meeting was attended by the Director of the BDF General Command Court, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, and a number of senior BDF officers. The Bahrain Defense Force Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, awarded first and second degree medals of military merit to a number of senior BDF officers conferred by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa at the General Command of the BDF. He also awarded first class long service medals on the occasion of the BDF's establishment, which falls on the 5th of February. Present were the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Ziyad bin Sagr Al Naimi, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Defense, Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and a number of senior BDF officers. The BDF commander in chief conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King to the officers, congratulating them on this award and praising their continuous efforts in serving the Defense Force. He wished them success in their military duties, adding that the affiliates of the BDF have become a model of dedication and perseverance. واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا دابت هذه القيادة على توفير المناخ الجيد لجميع منتسبيها قيادة سيدي صاحب الجلالة القائد الأعلى ولله الحمد أنتم ليس فقط من الرعيل الأول إنما جزء أيضا من الرعيل الأول وأوال الرعيل الثاني إن شاء الله ستكونون إن شاء الله مثالاً لإخوانكم وما تكريم جلالة الملك لكم بهذه الأوسمة اليوم إلا دليل على تقدير قوة الدفاع لجميع الأعمال اللي تقومون بها اليوم إخوانكم يقاتلون في مناطق بعيدة تقريباً نسبياً عن الاتصال اليومي وأنجزوا ولله الحمد بفضل ايضا عملكم وتوجيهات القاده الصغار والكبار الموجودين وقوه الدفاع ان شاء الله بتامن كل الامكانيات الموجوده لدعم هذه المسيره الطويله ليست بالشاقه او الصعبه لكنها يعني تحتاج الى جهد اكثر منا جميعا بالاخص في هذه الظروف ظروف العمليات وظروف التهديد وظروف الحروب تغيرت تحتاج إلى تطوير في العلم وليس فقط في التدريب أصبح الفصل بين الاثنين أمر مهم وبتوجيهات سيدي صاحب الجلالة سيتم فصل هذا الموضوع يمكن إن شاء الله بطريقة احترافية في الأشهر القادمة يكون التركيز على بعض العلوم العسكرية ومثال على ذلك هناك مشروع إن شاء الله قيد الدراسة لإنشاء إن شاء الله جامعة عسكرية إن شاء الله تشمل جميع الكليات المتخصصة اللي تساعد الضابط وضابط الصف والفرد في العلوم العسكرية فقط وليس فقط في التدريب فيصبح مسؤولية القائد يمكن التدريب ومسؤولية الجهات الأخرى في القيادة العامة الإشراف على الناحية العلمية إن شاء الله وتوفيرها ليس فقط لضباطنا لكن إن شاء الله في المستقبل حتى لأبنائنا إن شاء الله في المدارس العسكرية 
لأن العلوم اليوم أصبحت بعضها غير متوفر لنا وجربناها عند بعض الدول بدون ما حددها ما يعطونا بعض التخصصات اللي نطلبها في العلوم وهذه يحتاج إلى توفيرها إن شاء الله خلال إن شاء الله السنين القصيرة إن شاء الله القيادة العامة بتوجيه جلالة الملك ويعني اجتهاد الأخوان المسؤولين كلهم, كلهم وانتو منهم نقدر نوفر هذه الناحية بقية الأمور أنتم تعرفون أن أمور التطوير ولله الحمد والتسليح ماشي على برامج مقرة مبرمجة تم التوقيع على أغلبها وإن شاء الله بعد القادم أفضل للقوات البرية إن شاء الله لأن سلاح الجو وسلاح البحرية أخذوا نصيبهم لا بعد هم بنصيبهم نصيب الأسد إن شاء الله وباقي إن شاء الله بعد الدور على القوات البرية فنتمنى لكم إن شاء الله التوفيق وتوجيه مرتباتكم إن شاء الله بالاستمرار في الأداء الجيد وقوة الدفاع مبخرة اليوم بفضل جهودكم وجهود أخوانكم نتمنى لكم التوفيق وكل عام وانتم بخير وإن شاء الله بعد بعد شهدائنا ما ننساهم نقرأ عليهم الفاتحة A joint meeting was held remotely between the representatives' council headed by its speaker, Fawzi Azainal, and the Minister of Interior headed by its minister, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in the presence of the first and second deputy speakers of the councils, members of the Foreign Affairs, Defense, and National Security and Human Rights Committees, the Chief of Public Security, and a number of the ministry's senior officials to brief the representatives' council on the developments of the security situation. Zainal affirmed that the meeting comes within the framework of the constant cooperation between the legislative and executive executive authorities in implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Current Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. She highlighted the parliamentary support to maintaining security and stability, protecting the society from terrorist acts, rejecting violence and incitement, and harming the interests of citizens. She also hailed the efforts of the security authorities in cooperation with the National Intelligence Agency in foiling the two terrorist operations. The Speaker expressed the Council's condemnation of the terrorist acts, affirming the Council's support for the competent authorities to take all legal and security measures to preserve the security of the society and its gains. Zainal added that Bahrain, in light of the comprehensive development march of His Majesty the King, and with the unity of its people and the cooperation of its authorities, is always able to stop terrorist acts with vigilance and readiness. For his part, the Minister of Interior expressed his thanks to the Council Speaker and members for their patriotic stances and their condemnation of the terrorist acts that targeted two ATMs on February 3rd. Third, he then noted the many indicators that reflect the stability of the secure and the security of the kingdom. The minister affirmed that the affairs of the fisherman receives the support of His Majesty the King and the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, adding that the ministry is working on assessing the damages suffered by the fishermen and determining the necessary compensation to ensure that their rights and interests are preserved and their sources of livelihood are secured. He prays that the security and stability in the kingdom during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. He also stressed the importance of working with a team spirit and maintaining community cohesion and committing to national responsibility. General Sheikh Rashid highlighted the achievements in the reform and rehabilitation centers, expressing his thanks to those in charge. At the conclusion of the meeting, the Council of Representatives as Speaker, First and Second Deputy Speaker and members expressed their appreciation to the Minister of Interior. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the President of the European Council, Charles Michael, in the light of his visit to Brussels. The Minister conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the remarkable friendship relations between Bahrain and the European Union and the progress they witnessed. He expressed his Bahrain's keenness on enhancing various aspects of cooperation and the continuous communication with the European Union in all fields. He hailed the efforts of the European Council in facing various regional and international crises and its contributions to resolving international 
international conflicts peacefully. For his part, Charles Michael welcomed the minister, highlighting the telephone call between him and His Majesty the King. Recently, he praised the keenness of His Majesty the King on bolstering the values of coexistence and tolerance between various uh, religions and doctrines, affirming the importance of increasing cooperation and ties between Bahrain and the European Union in various fields to serve their joint interests. During the meeting, points of view on the development of the political and security situation in the region were exchanged and a number of regional and international issues were discussed. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Ablati Van Rashid Zayani, met with the High Representative of the European Union, Josep Borrell. During the meeting, the Minister expressed Bahrain's pride in the friendship relations between Bahrain and the European Union, expressing Bahrain's keenness on increasing the joint cooperation fields with the European Union in various fields. He hailed the efforts of the European Union in increasing regional and international security and stability, asserting the importance of the Union's contribution to the efforts to combat various political and security challenges. For his part, Josep Borrell expressed his satisfaction with the friendship ties and cooperation between Bahrain and the European Union, affirming the importance of increasing bilateral cooperation, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also visited the Embassy of Bahrain to Belgium within the framework of his visit to Brussels, accompanied by the Ministry's Under Secretary of International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the accompanying delegation. The Minister was received by Bahrain's Ambassador to Belgium, Dr. Bahi Al Jishi. Dr. Al Zayani toured the Embassy building, hailing the efforts of Ambassador Bahi Al Jishi and all the Embassy staff in supporting the interests of the Kingdom and strengthening ties of friendship and cooperation with Belgium. He expressed his appreciation for their continuous diplomatic work in light of the current conditions imposed by the coronavirus pandemic, wishing them continued success in performing the tasks and responsibilities assigned to them. For her part, the ambassador expressed her thanks and appreciation to the support of the embassy receives from the ministry, affirming their keenness to enhance bilateral ties and cooperation in implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King to maintain the interests of both countries and people. The government team, which included the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem bin Fadl Al Boyanin, held a joint meeting remotely with representatives of the Legislative Authority, members of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committees of the Shura Representatives Councils, and reached a final consensus of the draft of the state's general budget for the fiscal years 2021 2022. The government team affirmed the increase in allocation for the social protection item and the continuation of subsidies subsidizing electricity and water for the citizens in his first residence. They noted that the draft of the general budget is based on a number of foundations and principles, which are that the government itself began to rationalize and enhance the efficiency of expenditures, reduce operating expenses, maintain social support for the citizens most in need, and the quality of government services. They noted that the government has studied a number of views and suggestions made by the two committees, where the government's opinion was reviewed and discussed on the most prominent amendments and proposals submitted by the two committees and related to amending some budget items, including oil and non-oil revenues, the budget for operating expenses and budgets for projects. They also noted that the current stage requires concerted efforts within Team Bahrain to approve the draft of the state general budget according to the set plan as soon as possible, hailing the continuous cooperation and diligence shown by the executive and legislative authorities. The Minister of Information Affairs, Ali bin Mohammed Ramehi, addressed a remote seminar of students and professors at Al Ahliya University in which he affirmed that enabling young creative Bahraini competencies and increasing responsible media journalistic freedom represents the pillar of enhancing media's message and contributes to promoting national achievements locally and internationally. In light of the comprehensive development march of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Ramehi expressed his pride in holding the seminar, which coincides with the, university, the anniversary of the national action charter and the resulting reform and media openness in light of the unlimited support of His Majesty the King to journalism and media. The minister hailed the ministry's keenness on providing a legislative, technical and professional atmosphere to develop national media and its impact as an effective partner in protecting the homeland and its cultural identity according to a modern and flexible strategy in accordance with the government plan and economic vision 2030. He noted the ministry's commitment to its development 
sent a message of establishing the values of loyalty and good citizenship and qualifying national media caters through integrating them in specialized training programs in partnerships with local universities and global institutions, as well as developing their abilities and supporting Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Haramehi reviewed the ministry's efforts in developing the infrastructure of the media and communications sector and increasing its investment appeal. He asserted that Bahrain continues its efforts in enhancing its media presence in the international arena by bolstering Arab media partnerships and combating religious hatred, extremism, terrorism and counter-media campaigns. In an earlier bulletin, we were joined by information technology specialists at the Ministry of Education, Nidal al who talked about the Ministry of Education's preparations for the second semester of the academic year. The decision of starting this new semester, accommodating all students virtually, was implemented with preparations in a form of well-structured process. Uh, starts with, of course, the insightful instructions from uh, Dr. Majid Al Naimi, um, Dr. Mohammed Mbarak, Mrs. Nawal Khatar, and all of the directorates, departments, and schools of the Ministry of Education. Yet, having a fully virtual semester required the IT directorate to be the backbone of the MOE's preparations. And from an IT perspective, uh, the process ensured the readiness of all platforms and technical aspects required to achieve this challenging duty. Um, from prov providing the um, required technical support and training, uh, the account setup for students and schools faculty, um, the school's internet connectivity, devices, along with the creation of classes and distribution of courses and activities through both either the EduNet portal or Microsoft Teams. In an earlier bulletin, we were also joined by the Director of Corporation Communications at Bahrain Olympic Committee, Ra'a Abu Asali, who spoke about the Kingdom of Bahrain marking my sports day in the time of the coronavirus pandemic. After the direction of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad, the President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, and with the leadership of Mr. Mohammed bin Hassan al Nusuf. Um, we, we thought that what's the safest way that we can still celebrate Bahrain Sports Day in, a, in an eventful and in, a, in an informative where we can reach out to all the public. But yet we make sure that they are safe wherever they are and none of the, um, you know, the precautions that we have to apply on and on. Um, and that's what made us decide to go online. Um, when we went uh, viral on the um, social media, we went. Uh, we made a program with uh, the Ministry of Information. Um, I have to thank them. Uh, now that you invited me uh, through here, thank you all uh, from the Ministry of Information. They were very supportive. They were. They were. They were there. They just want this event to happen this year, and Alhamdulillah, we've done it uh, professionally and perfectly. The Kingdom of Bahrain today approved the emergency use of the Sputnik V vaccine produced by the Jamalaya National Center for Epidemiological and Microbiology Research of the Ministry of Health of the Russian Federation. The decision to authorize the Sputnik V vaccine was based on data provided by the manufacturing company, results of an expanded study and a process of review and evaluation of effectiveness of data conducted by the Kingdom's National Health Regulatory Authority, NARA. The NARA also reviewed and evaluated the safety of the vaccine vaccine demonstrated by clinical trials and studies as well as verify the quality of the vaccine by reviewing scientific data showing the quality of manufacturing and the stability of the product. Additionally, the stages of manufacturing and the manufacturer's commitment to applying the principles of good pharmaceutical manufacturing were verified according to international standards in the pharmaceutical industry and requirements issued by the authorities. The Nahra also took the opinion of the Clinical Research Committee made up of consultants from a group of academics and uh, physicians responsible for approving clinical trials. After presenting the technical and scientific data, the authority took the decision to approve the emergency use authorization of the vaccine and allow its use in the kingdom. The authority stated that based on the approval issued today, the Ministry of Health will start import procedures according to current standards and requirements. 
The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that the total number of individuals who have taken the vaccine has reached 212,940. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiatives to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,127 with 660 recoveries, 759 registered new cases and four deaths. 306 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 440 are contacts of active cases and 13 are travel related. The deceased were a 64-year-old and 66-year-old female citizen, a 79-year-old female expatriate and a 6-year-old male expatriate. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.